Sunny 95. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode number 476. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Hey, before we get started, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you would please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. It's Dr. Kavitko and Associates. Also, all past episodes, complete with video, are available at thereasonswesmile.com. Today's show, we are welcoming into the studio astrophysicist Dr. Paul Sutter. <coughs> He's an OSU researcher and the chief scientist at COSI. Thank you so much for coming. Good morning. Thanks for having me. We really appreciate it. It was uh, fun when we got together yesterday. We, my wife and I came to COSI. We're going to hear a little bit of audio of that in a minute. But uh, a lot of people can't even say astrophysicist. <laughs> <laughs> I have a hard time spelling it, to be perfectly honest. Oh, you do? I have to think about it. Every time I type it or write it, I have, okay, P-H-Y-S. It, physicist, it's, it's, it's not an easy word. <laughs> that makes me feel better. <laughs> because I was talking to uh, my producer before the show, and I said, most people can't say it. A lot of people can't spell it. And he understands it, so he's probably smarter than all of us put together. <laughs> so how'd you get so smart? <laughs> Reading lots of books and Reading? staying in school. There you go. No, that's good. Education is, is the, uh, the key, and it's awesome, right? So, uh, let's see here. Now, we are going to uh, listen to some audio that we captured yesterday. So let's go ahead and do that so we can get back to the live stuff. Okay, here we go. Yesterday, my wife and I went to Kosai so we could meet Dr. Sutter in person and have him give us a tour. And it was really awesome, by the way, and I want to tell you guys a little bit about what we saw. One of the things we started out viewing is a research area. Tell me about that, Doc. Yeah, so uh, in the LIFE exhibit at Kosai, there's some embedded OSU researchers. We call these labs in LIFE. And they're real researchers with real labs, with real undergrads. These are their offices, their laboratories where they do everything. There's these great class walls where you can see the research happening and especially these researchers chose this place because they do a lot of experiments on people like they'll do language studies and so they want to see how people respond to certain kinds of language experiments and they can just pull people in that are walking down the hallway and participate in real science. That's got to be awesome for the researchers because normally they're stuck in a lab where nobody knows what they do. Yeah exactly so it gives them visibility and it gives them access to the test subjects that they need to continue their work. Awesome. And that's really cool. So we have language, and then what else do we have? We have a College of Pharmacy. What do they do there? They do autopsies there. Pretend autopsies. Pretend op autopsies. The fake cadaver. I think they give it a clever name for the fake cadaver. And then we also have the College of Optometry, so they do eye studies and vision studies, and it's all embedded here in the life exhibit. Awesome. That's really cool. All right, so what's next? So right now we are sneaking in the back door of the planetarium, right? Exactly. Okay, we're going to go see if there's a show, and this is, this is your baby. Yeah, not quite my my baby, I, I didn't pay for it or anything, <laughs> but as an astrophysicist, this is like my home base in COSI. I, I represent all the science of COSI, but especially the stuff going on in the planetarium. Okay, okay, we have to be quiet because we're not sure if there's a show going on because we're coming in the back door. Actually off. They're off? Okay. Okay, so we're going to go. So now we get the lights on. Okay, so we're not, there is no show, which means we're going to get some better access. The system is on. Oh. Okay. Uh, oh, it's just like 10 minutes. Oh, really? 
So if this, okay, so we're coming in. Oh, the system's actually off. Okay. It is off. Okay, so we can. But you can do this. Okay, so we're in the back of the theater, essentially, and oh, it's like three hundred. Yeah, it's completely dark. Oh, it's just a whole dome. It's exactly. a like it's you're looking up at the sky. It's a digital system, and that's what's really cool about planetariums nowadays. They're not the old star balls with just little points of light. It's a, an immersive digital theater now, so we can show any movie. We can show images. We can fly around the universe in real time. It's such an amazing experience. It's nothing like how I grew up in a planetarium. So everything is a, a photo of the real deal. Is that what you say when you mean digital? Yes. Yeah, sometimes we use photographs from, say, the Voyager Pioneer probes or just computer simulated generated images of as we're flying around. But it's all based on real data. So we can fly around the galaxy based on real star positions and it generates it on the fly. So if the audience says, I want to go to Mars. Then really? Yeah, then, then we'll fly over to Mars. Or if the audience says, I want to go to another galaxy, we'll fly off to another galaxy. That's really cool. That's really cool. Who gets to decide? Do you have a program or you ask the audience where you want to go next? Or Most of the programs that we run here are a mix. So there will be some programmatic content, some stuff we want to explain to the audience, but then we open it up. And I do a show in the evenings during Family Friday nights and during COSI After Dark where it's all audience-led. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah 100% Q&A. I just stand on the front. We have an operator running the computer in the back, and I just let people shout questions at me, and I answer them, and we bring up the visuals in real time. It's a hilarious, fun show to do. Is this something that you have to sign up in advance for? If you just happen to be here, you can step in. Yeah, no reservations required. I mean, you can buy tickets in advance. That always helps. But you can just show up uh, during Family Friday nights and during COSI After Darks. Okay, and what time will this show take place on those days? On Family Friday nights, it's 7.15 p.m., and COSI After dark it's 8 30 p.m okay yeah we're gonna have to check that out <laughs> it's, a, it's a really fun show trust me it sounds like it all right we are speaking with dr paul sutter he's an astrophysicist at osu and the chief scientist at cosi he received his phd in physics from the university of illinois in 2011 and as a department of energy Com computational science graduate fellow I, and then followed by research positions at Paris Institute of Astrophysics and the Astronomical Observatory of Trieste. Is that how you say it? Trieste in Italian or in English, Trieste. Okay, I should have asked you that before the show. <laughs> Thanks for helping me, Trieste. In addition to his research, which spans topics from the earliest moments of the Big Bang to the largest structures in the universe. He also hosts the Ask a Spaceman podcast, writes for space.com, and consults for TV and film productions. So again, we're welcoming Dr. Paul Sutter into the studio, and thank you so much again for being with me and for uh, showing us around yesterday. That was awesome. Yeah, that was a really fun tour. <laughs> so what I want to do is, because uh, I'm like a big kid, right? <laughs> what I want to do... All scientists are big kids. I guess you're right. I guess you're right. So what do you hope to accomplish as the chief scientist at COSI? Like, what do you, how do you see your job description? Yeah, so at COSI, I have three three main duties. One, I ensure the scientific integrity of all the content we produce. So all scripts, all exhibits. Really? If it's a science content in the museum, uh, then I want to check it to make sure it's actually correct. Okay. Uh, and second, I serve, because of my joint position with OSU, I serve as a liaison uh, to that great wonderful institution with all those thousands of experts. So if it's something, if oh. we need expertise or a special visitor or a speaker or some consulting and it's outside of my primary field of physics or astronomy, then I connect with all my colleagues at OSU and get them uh, into COSI to help us out. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and then, and then lastly, uh, my job is to serve as the public face of science for the museum. So appearing on media, like wonderful radio shows like this, uh, to talk about the latest news, to provide context for our community, uh, to do speaking events, uh, to just to explain science and explore science and share the joy of science uh, with Columbus. Awesome. Now, not, not right now, but later on in the show, we want to talk about the, the new the solar system they found that has oh, yeah, seven yeah. Earth-like planets, but we'll Big save that deal. for later. All yeah. right. <laughs> I know it's the biggest news, but we want to save it. Okay. Now, it's hard for me and a lot of us to grasp the idea that we have a never-ending universe, that there's something that never ends. Well, actually, the universe is finite. It is. It is, it is very, very, very large. We're not exactly sure how big it is, but it is finite. Okay. And... Remember in the um, Men in Black uh, movie where after everything was all done, they put it in a little box and put it in a locker like in the lunchroom? Yes. 
that's kind of is that kind of like this, that? This may surprise you, but that that was a fictional movie <laughs> and not representative of our latest understanding of the universe in cosmology and astrophysics. So, so tell me a little bit about um, um, well, some of the movies that you've consulted for to make sure. It, obviously, it wasn't that one. I wouldn't. They wouldn't have done that, right? <laughs> right. I actually uh, can't talk about oh. the the films I've consulted for. Uh, because they're not out yet. All oh. the production is under wraps, okay. and, and the the production companies say you can't you can't really talk about it. Okay, I thought they were already out, and we could talk about it. I've but... done a few. I've worked with National Geographic before okay. on some TV series, and then I've worked for, uh, for some uh, film production teams, uh, and I've done a couple of them, but they're just they're just not out yet. So okay. it, I have to keep I have to zip it at some point, which sucks. Like as a scientist, <laughs> I love sharing. I love what I'm doing. Uh, I love uh, explaining what I'm doing, uh, opening up uh, all my work to the public uh but i can't okay <laughs> <laughs> okay all right well well then uh, at some point when you are allowed to talk about it send me an email or contact me yeah i'll come back and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about we'll, it we'll talk about it. we'll go to the movie together okay hey that sounds even better okay so now the um um what do you hope to accomplish as the chief scientist at COSI? so i know you want you're the face of it the public face but i'm assuming you want to encourage um young children to become scientists, right? Or, or that's is there part more? of it. That's absolutely part of it. And that's a big job that COSI has is showing kids like, hey, you can be a scientist if you want to. Right. Uh, so here's the kind of skills you need. It's not necessarily the skills you think you need to really? become a scientist. Uh, and then, but it's also communicating to parents, potential parents, grandparents, if you, if you go around and ask scientists how they got started, what motivated them? In almost all cases, there is a strong family support that right. uh, either gave them the freedom and flexibility to pursue whatever they want or helped them you know, push in that direction that they desired. So for every time I talk to a kid, I'm also talking, talking to, to the, the parent parents. or I'm talking to a 20 something who's, who doesn't even have kids yet, but might have kids 10 years from now uh, to show how Science is something that's shared by everyone, no matter how old you are, no matter what demographic you are, no matter what background you have. Some, science is something that we can all share in. Something, sh science is something that we can, I can communicate or try to communicate to anyone, and it's something that we can all celebrate. And so that's my main message. Science is for sharing. Okay. All right, well, we are going to do Dr. Kavitko's question of the day in a minute. Let me just give you the phone number you can pre-program into your phone, 614-459-9769. Don't call yet, but it's 614-459-9769. And uh, as a reminder, as a refresher, uh, when we were talking at COSI, we, you took us into a research area. Mm -hmm. they, had, uh, they were doing eye research. They were doing language research. They had the, uh, the kind of the fake autopsies, but there was no dental research. None. We'll have to talk about that. Anyway. <laughs> get a grant. Get a grant. Oh, You're more grant. than welcome. <laughs> All right. But before we do Dr. Kavitko's question of the day, we'd like you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household. Prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. All right, and the question is, and by the way, you're going to have a chance not only to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist, but uh, Dr. Sutter was kind enough to arrange for us to be able to give away two free passes to COSI for either an adult or a child. I'll be mailing those out. Uh, they'll go out Monday morning. So the winner's going to receive both. And the question of the day is, earlier in the show, Dr. Sauter mentioned that there were living research labs right at COSI. Which type of research did not, did he not, did he say was not going on or something like that? You know what I mean? <laughs> Which one wasn't happening? Uh, in the labs in life? Yes. In, in, in particular, well, that focuses on, that exhibit is the life exhibit. And so the research going on there focuses on uh, actual, you know, bio biology or related to anatomy or things that involving uh, human cognition, 
uh, or psychology uh, or linguistics. Uh, we also have another research center in COSI that focuses on social science. This, okay. this is the Center for Research and Evaluation, where uh, they study, they do all of our visitor feedback. They let us know when we design a new exhibit or program. They help us understand if we're actually doing a good job and oh, we're okay. actually meeting our educational wow. goals. So uh, but when it comes to things like physical sciences or aeronautical engineering, uh, we leave those to OSU. Okay, so no dental research is going on. So that's the question. All right, the winner's going to receive free flowers from the Santa's florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon and two free passes to COSI. The phone number is 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. Oops, go ahead and call now. <laughs> I think you have to go ahead and push the next. Um, I don't think the producer is. Yes. Hi, I'm Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. Look for my smile on the big screen this summer, courtesy of Dr. Gavitko. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile radio and road show. Did you know that you no longer need to visit several different dental professionals to get more complete dental care? We handle everything from cleanings and orthodontics to restoration, implants, and smile makeovers, all in my office. And now we have two locations. Get the most advanced technology and procedures available today. It's more complete dentistry. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. Dr. Kavitko, let's go! Yeah! Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> All right, we're back. We're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. We have four callers on the line. Dr. Sutter, do me a favor. Pick a number between one and four. Pi. <laughs> 3.14? Oh, it has to be an integer. You want an integer. Oh, okay. Uh, so we'll go to the closest one, three. <laughs> At least I knew, right? <laughs> three. Okay, that would be Barry. Hey, Barry, how are you? Good. Thank you for listening, first of all. Thank you for calling in. And what is the answer to Dr. Kavitko's question of the day? There was eye research. There was uh, language research, and was there dental research? No, there was no dental. Okay, no dental. All right, and we'll have to work on that. Like he said, we'll have to get a grant or something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Barry, what do you do for a living? I'm a teacher. Oh, awesome. And a high school? No, junior high. Junior high. Oh, my goodness, good for you. I don't know how people can put up with the kids that are dealing with the hormones. You're talking like 13, 14-year-olds? Yes, sir. Oh, boy. Good for you. Congratulations. We appreciate your service. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, stay on the line so we can get the uh, information and get you those flowers and passes, all right? All right. Okay, from COSI. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Okay, so now, uh, bef hey, before we go to the phone, let's go ahead and listen to the next segment that we recorded yesterday. That'll give my producer time to talk to the winner. Okay, so where are we? All right, so this is the Gadgets exhibit, and it is, it is one of my favorite exhibits. I can't say which one is exactly my favorite, but this is one of them. It's a playground for science and engineering and robotics and chemistry. It's just a blast. There's like so many little things to do, like so many little activities that I'll come in here and play sometimes. <laughs> Tell me, give me a couple examples. I see we have robotic, uh, they make things with robots or what? Yeah, so we've got a whole set of tables here called Gadgets Cafe, where when kids and families come in, the COSI volunteer or team member will give them some instructions and some ingredients, and you can make stuff, explore the interesting properties and materials and chemistry, get really messy, and then the parents can just leave, and then it gets all cleaned up. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's, that's cool. That's the best part. That's the best part. And then further in the back, there's more activities. Uh, you can build your own bridges or try to build your own bridges. 
With what? With metal. With metal? Really? Let's, Let's go it. look. Let's go check it out. This is cool. So anybody can do this. You don't have to have a special reservation. You just show up and... You just show up. Wow, that's awesome. This is good. Oh, look at this. Oh, my goodness. They have... Okay. Oh, with metal. Okay, so the kids have to... They have all these little pieces and parts. They have bolts and nuts, and they need to put them together and figure out what's going to make it the strongest, I guess. Or at least... We'll start with just making it. That's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's goal number one. And then we'll get to having a competition for strongest or longest or things like that. Let me check it out. Okay, look here. We've got the wing, wing nuts. That makes it easier for the kids to do some great big long bolts. I guess they're all kind of long. And then we have these little building. They're like erector set, but bigger. And then pads for people to walk over. That's pretty neat. So how long does it take kids to make a bridge? And is it usually like a group project where they're working together, which is probably good for team building, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it takes an infinite amount of time because usually kids, or usually the parents, the kids get into it and then the parents, after a half hour, say, you know, we should go eat lunch. we got a show to catch. Maybe we can come back to the bridge. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, what do we have over here? Oh, yeah, yeah, these are these all sorts of foam blocks in various shapes that hook together almost like giant foam Legos that you can attach to this wall. You can just try to build structures. It's really cool. The point of this is just so kids can play around to see how structures fit together. Like, if you have a vision, you want to make a big, giant shape out of all these pieces parts. Well, what kind of parts do you need to collect? How are they going to support each other? How can you actually make it stand up or attach to the wall to do something bigger? Like vertical Lego. Exactly, exactly. (laughs) Spend a whole day right here. (laughs) Yeah, this must be why people have memberships, huh? Yeah, exactly. So you can come and spend a couple hours just in gadgets and then come back another day and there's more stuff to play around with in gadgets. Wow. So when somebody gets here, if they've heard about gadgets on our show here today and they want to make sure their child finds gadgets, do they just go to the the desk in the lobby and they'll tell them how to get here? I mean, like, where is the gadget room? Right, Gadgets is up on the second floor on the opposite side of the planetarium. Okay, awesome. Look at all this stuff. Now, what is this thing on the wall here that they can put balls, they can design, they can put, what do they put, a rubber ball in these tubes? Yeah, okay. it's, a, it's a ball launcher, and you have to try to get it in and get the balls down. It's, it's you actually throw it up there into the big funnel? We got a launcher. Oh, oh you have a launcher? <laughs> So what do you do? You put the ball in the funnel, okay. and then you turn the handle, okay. and it Boom. Okay. Can we try one? You put the ball up in there. Yeah, so it's like you, you put the ball in the funnel, and you turn the crank, and it lifts up a big weight. And then when it reaches a certain point, the weight drops down and pushes all the air, and it's just air pressure that shoots through the tube and launches the ball in. Okay. So the goal is to get it up into that other funnel up there? Yeah, exactly. And if you get it up in the other funnel, then it races down the track and does interesting things. Okay. Okay, let's see. So you turn it and keep turning, 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 and turning in the same direction, and then all of a sudden it goes pop, right? Oh, you did it. He got it in. Oh, look it. Okay, the ball's going down the track. Oh, it's coming down the tube. Oh, where'd it go? There it goes. There it goes. Oh, it (laughs) fell. That is really fun. That's really cool. Awesome. All right. Well, people need to come. You need to come to Kosa. Your kids will love it. You'll love it. I'm amazed. I've lived in town for years and years and did not realize how cool this can be. Yeah, it's really, really fun. Hey, we have to go to a break right now. But And when we come back, we're going to ask Dr. Sutter about the seven Earth-like planets that NASA just discovered. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Reigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses?
If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is The Reasons We Smile, episode number 476. And we have with us in the studio astrophysicist Dr. Paul Sutter. And he is the chief scientist at COSI and also splits his time 50% with Ohio State University. So tell me, I mean, this is, uh, I saw some astrophysicists absolutely giddy. It's been a big week. Yeah. It's been a fun, fun week. So tell us about that. Yeah, so Wednesday, uh, NASA held a big press conference announcing the discovery of a nearby system that we call TRAPPIST-1. It's about 40 light years away. And orbiting this star are seven planets. Each of these planets are about the size of the Earth. And three of those planets receive about the same amount of sunlight that we do here on Earth, which means they are potentially habitable. They potentially have liquid water on their surface. Wow, wow. So then it might answer the question, are we alone? Yeah, it's getting to answering the question, are we alone? That's a very, very big goal. That's a very tough question to answer. But we're doing it one step at a time. And, and step number one is asking, how common are Earth-like planets okay. around, say, sun-like stars or around uh, or orbiting their stars with the right distance so they have the same amount of sunlight? And it's just amazing that this one system that's just down the block, galactically speaking, uh, in absolute <laughs> terms, is super-duper far away. But but in, in terms of the Milky Way galaxy, it's not so far away. One system has three worlds orbiting that star. They're all within the habitable zone. Wow. Now, what's surprising to me is they could have three because there's, aren't they uh, different distances from their sun? And so we, we are a certain distance where it's perfect for life here on Earth. And are you, somehow are they closer to each other so that they're all within that same sweet spot, so to speak? Yeah, exactly. So the... We call this region around the star where liquid water can be supported on the surface. We call that the habitable zone. Okay. And it's a band. It has some thickness. Okay. And in this system, actually, the star that they orbit, TRAPPIST-1, is a only has about 9% of the mass of our own sun. It's a very small star. It's a relatively cool star. It looks very, very red. And all these planets are actually crammed in nice and tight. Okay. And, and, and so it's something like I have a sci-fi novel. Uh, you can actually stand on the surface of one of these planets and see the, the surfaces of the other planets, just like we see the surface of the moon. It's like they're huddling around the fire in a campfire. Exactly, exactly. That's a great <laughs> analogy, yeah. Huh, I'm going to steal that analogy. <laughs> okay, now we talked yesterday about what 40 light years means, mm -hmm. and you did some rough calculations in your head as we stood there, which I was still impressed, I'm still impressed by. How long would it take us to send a probe? You said 36,000 miles yeah, per second. Yeah, so like New, New Horizons is uh, uh, one of the fastest space probes ever made. That's the one that gave us these great images of Pluto. Okay. That uh, had a launch speed of 36,000 miles per hour, which is incredibly fast. Uh, going 40 light years, I'm ballparking uh, somewhere around, say, 500,000 years. That's how long it would take for a probe to get there. Yeah. And once it got there, it would take 40 years to send the information back, the pictures. Yeah. But, okay. you know, after 500,000 years, I, I could wait 40 more <laughs> for the actual signal. So, although it's very exciting, we're never going to get there. We're never going to get there, but we can still study it. We can still understand it. We can look for signatures of, say, oxygen in the atmosphere, which is a byproduct of photosynthesis. Right. So, a hallmark of life. Uh, we can still study these systems in great detail. Yeah. No, I think it's really awesome. I, I'm still in awe of how scientists can we've never been there we don't even we don't well, to me at least it seems like we don't know anything and yet we always have it figured out we we know most of what we needed to know before we ever get there before we ever send a probe there we already have a a really really good guess right we have a good guess, but there's a lot in space that we don't understand, which is why we have the space probes in our own solar system, because remote observations from our telescopes and observatories here on Earth are only so good, uh, but we're doing the best we can. Wow. Awesome. Well, thank you for what you do and for what COSI does, and I do reiterate, people, you need to go. This is like a, a, an awesome gem right here in our backyard. Uh, I'm impressed. I plan on going back several times. I want to make that bridge. I want to build that bridge. Uh, how, how do people, uh, well, first of all, if they want to um, go to COSI, they just, uh, is there a phone number? How do they find more information? Is there a website? COSI.org. <coughs> Cos oh, there you go. Very simple. All right. Looks like that's all the time we have. And uh, so don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Dr. Kavitko and visit my office Facebook page and like us. It's Dr. Kavitko and Associates. Remember that all past episodes complete with video are available at thereasonswesmile.com. You think we can get you back on a future show? 
Let's do it. Okay, okay. You guys all heard. He said we'll do it. <laughs> be sure to be sure to tune in next week when we will have leadership development strategist and stress management counselor Judy Lair. And also every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. This is Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to TheReasonsWeSmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588 or send an email to speaking at TheReasonsWeSmile.com.